Welcome gamers, Hazardor here, and today I'm going to review Gwent, the Witcher card game. Before I start, I'm going to presume everybody watching has played The Witcher 3 and knows what Gwent actually is. In case you haven't, you definitely need to play The Witcher 3, but at its simplest form, this game is a card game where the main objective is to simply have more points on the board than the opposition player. And all you need to know really is that it's an absolutely amazing card game to play and a standalone Gwent game is no different. Now the main reason you'd want to download this game is simply because it has multiplayer. Us Gwent fans have wanted this for so long. Ever since we started to get addicted in The Witcher 3, we've wanted to play other people at Gwent. Some fans even made websites where you could play Gwent against each other, but that wasn't made by CD Projekt Red. This game was, and you can definitely tell so, because it's so polished and it's absolutely perfect. So as for the multiplayer itself, you can play casual games, where obviously you just play casual games against people, there's no competitiveness to it, although you still do have to try and win of course, but the main reason is of course the ranked matches. In these ranked matches, you will be playing against people who really want to win. It's going to be very competitive, there are going to be lots of tactics involved, and no one's going to take it lightly. The game also has a single player mode, it has a tutorial, which of course shows you what to do, a practice mode, which of course you practice in, and then a single player campaign which is actually pretty good addition to the game where you play along you start off with no cards and then through your journey you just accumulate the best cards and go against tougher opposition but remember you will always be playing against AI but for me personally I just love playing the multiplayer because knowing you've outsmarted someone in real life other than a computer just feels much more satisfying to me also with the few hours I played with the game I didn't encounter a single bug a single glitch or a single game crash or any sort of problems connecting to the servers or anything like that, so I really do have to tip my hat to CD Projekt Dread for producing a game that's got no problems whatsoever in this current state. Now apart from playing Gwent itself, possibly the funnest thing to do in this game is to build up your card collection and then construct your own deck separately. Basically, through this game you'll be winning cards, you can buy cards, you can buy sort of loot boxes where you get new cards in it, and all these cards, you can collect them, you can dismantle cards you don't want and then craft new ones, and basically the main objective is to simply collect them all so you can build the best deck possible. So this game isn't simply playing Gwent, it's a massive sticker book of Gwent cards which you have to collect over time. The one negative that I'm going to have to get out of the way is that it is a free to play game but of course that means there will be a lot of microtransactions and what do you do with these microtransactions? You simply buy loot boxes to get new cards. So it could turn into a pay to win situation where you spend lots of money, get all the best cards very quickly, build the best deck and absolutely smash everybody online, which won't be fun for the people losing whatsoever. So for the people who don't want to spend any money whatsoever, we'll be lagging behind in terms of card collecting, which is quite a shame, but of course CD Projekt Red do have to get some sort of money from this game. Now as for differences from the original game, as you can see, visually it is very different. The complete layout of the board has been changed, the visuals of the specific cards have changed a lot, the visuals of the board, the animations on screen when for example you take out another card or dismantle something. There are so many different things they've done to the game, it's completely been redesigned, so it's not simply copy and pasted from The Witcher 3. And as for the cards themselves, a lot of them are new to the game, so it's simply not a case of all the cards in The Witcher 3 are in the game now. We've had a lot of new cards, a lot of new abilities, a lot of new heroes, a lot of new special cards, weather cards, they've added lots to this game as I've said, and it's not a copy and paste game at all. And moving on to the gameplay, it is absolutely addicting. At the start, it may be quite hard to get into, especially if you have not played The Witcher 3, but once you play like 4 or 5 games and you really get a hang of what you're actually doing, some matches you can play can get such heart pounding moments. The gameplay itself is not only addicting, it's tactical, it's fun, it's everything you want from a card game. And overall, if you couldn't tell, I'm so overly positive about this game because I absolutely love Gwent. So as a verdict, even though this game is in beta, it's not really going to change drastically when the full game comes out is it let's be honest I'm gonna give the game a 9.5 out of 10 it's the best card game I've ever played that may be a little bit biased because I absolutely love the Witcher 3 but there's no denying this card game has been absolutely perfected and it's been mastered in almost every single aspect I may even say that at launch
launch, this game could take over Hearthstone as the best or the most popular card game on the internet. Which is a bold statement to make, but it's something I can definitely see happening. Because honestly, Gwent itself doesn't have many flaws. The gameplay is so amazing, abilities, winning matches, being tactical, it all adds to a very immersive experience and overall, it's just an absolutely amazing card game. But anyway guys, thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe for more.